All right. Hi, everyone. I am here talking with Kevin. You can see him in the picture with his lovely wife. She won't be joining us today. But Kevin is going to share with us a very amazing story about his career in real estate and what he did that other people sometimes forget to do or don't have the faith to do or whatever. But Kevin, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you came from. We all hear the accent. Uh, share, share with us a little here. So, yeah, all right. So, uh, uh, hey, I know where we started. <laughs> okay. Well, we started here. Here's what you've told me so far is that you, you went to, you immigrated into the United States and took a job there, but uh, that we wouldn't allow you to stay here. Shame on us. And so you <laughs> moved up to Canada and interestingly right. enough, you're doing in Canada, Kevin, uh, in Canada, what um, people say, well, you can't do it in Canada. There's You can't do deals in the U.S. from right. Canada, but you've kind of, in as much as you've, n you, now you've never been to Cleveland, you tell me, right? Is that correct? Correct. No, I've never been there. Done 11 deals, never fixed in one property, never been down there. So it's all been between wholesales and rental properties is, is pretty much what I've done down there. Well, there you go. So let's start with what you got started with here. Tell us a little sure. bit about this uh, first deal. Uh, whoops. So the first one is East East 131st Street. So this yeah. property uh, needed a lot. You can see from the first picture that it's taken from the back of the property. Um, it's, in, it's, it's in an area, it's in a transition area between a bad area and a good area. So, um, you know, there's a lot of investor interest there. Uh, because they can buy the property cheap, and it'll, you know, as the as the bad area gets better, it'll it'll appreciate a lot faster. So there's a lot of investor um, interest in that area, and this is one of the last streets um, before the you know before the suburb changes. Um, this one, um, we found the property. The people needed to move out and get going. Um, you know, it was um, it was an investor's property, um, but the the people had to move, and they were actually using the uh, uh, we'll get to that in a, a little bit later, but we put it on the contract for $3,500, and I think we made $2,000 on this property in a matter of two days, day and a half maybe. Um, I already had another investor looking at this property, and he was ready to go, go with it, so, um, and I knew what he was looking for. Um, entered it into, into a contract, and you can see, the, if you have a look at the real estate purchase contract there, it's circled, that says exit strategy. So that, that's just contingencies to get you out of the contract should something go wrong or should you find something wrong with the property. Um, also, a very straightforward real estate contract between myself and um, and the seller. Um, $3,500 is um, what we put on the contract for here and sold it for, I think it was $5,500 in the end. Made $2,000 um, uh, profit off of it. Well, nothing wrong with that. I mean, and that that's no. coming out of the gate. That's starting, and this is a property that needed some work, as you 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 can see here in the picture of the roof. Right. Now, was that creating a leak? That uh, situation there that I'm looking at in the roof. Um, let's just scroll down. Yeah, that was a bit of a leak. It was leaking down into the into the side of the property. Actually, that's the gallery roof. Um, oh, it was okay. leaking into the side into the side of the property and running down the wall to the floor. Oh, okay. Um, but what I was going to mention earlier on, if you scroll to the next um, to the next window uh, to the next picture, there you can see on the left hand side, coming to the top left hand corner, there that's an old cistern where they where they used to have water in the basement. They used to pump their water in once a week and use that as their water supply. And these people were actually using it as a bathtub. They were breaking the part of the wall out there and using it as a bathtub. So. Um, Interesting. Uh, great, I guess you could use it as a bathtub, but eventually you'd want to change the water, I guess. So. Yeah, you think so? That's why I say I'm not sure exactly how to get the water out there, but you stick it up in pocket. But anyway. Yeah, very interesting. Um, you know, scrolling down again, there's, there's a nice little fireplace at home. Um, not, not too bad a shape. The kitchen's a little, little iffy. Might want to just um, put some slats on the face of it, but. Um, you know, it, of course, that had to be rehabbed completely. Um, and uh, the person I sold it to was actually the contractor, so he would rehab it and put a tenant in it. Well, what he, what he did with the property. I think the point for people to understand is that that 
you decided you 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 did the event and you you bought into the program it's like you told me before i guess you banged your credit cards pretty good so you didn't have a lot of money left to do anything but uh you um you had the faith to get started i guess essentially and so you you did your first deal and this yeah, shows and, it. and it's that's something that you know a lot of people say oh, you can't do real estate without money well, and then that's felt it's kind of true because you still got to pay your phone account that you use to phone people. So, um, but I mean, I didn't use any of my cash down with this deal. Um, you know, I put it in the contract for thirty five hundred to show that he to show the intent to purchase for thirty five hundred. I had my exit clause in there so that I could get out of the contract if need be. And you know, uh, the buyer came with the money. We did a we did an assignment of contract. The buyer was fine with it. Um, he was fine paying fifty five hundred for the property. So, I mean, we made two grand off the deal and I didn't use any of my own money, which was great. Yeah, indeed. Very good. All right. So then we go on, you're stepping up on your next deal a little bit called Osceola. Yeah. Osceola. Yeah, this is, this is probably my favorite. This is probably one of my favorite ones. And this one, we didn't have a buyer lined up. Um, so we, we actually found, I connected with a guy. He, he, you know, I reached out to get some networking and I connected with a guy in Cleveland. And he actually wanted to sell a property to me. And, you know, we were back and forth over the phone, over the phone. And I said to him, I said, I said, you know, I, I, I don't buy properties. I said, I've got a buyer list that I, that I work with. I said, let's see if we can't just, you know, um, find a property or, you know, do a, do a joint venture on it. And that's what happened with this property. He found the guy that I was in, was welcome, as you can see in the contract there. Um, he needed to get out. He needed to sell his property. Um, it was it needs quite a bit of maintenance. So we went to the property, we put it under contract for seven thousand dollars, knowing that this could be a thirty five thousand dollar property in the end. And the rehab was around fifteen thousand dollars where we pinned it at. Um so we put it under contract for seven thousand dollars and found a buyer for it two days later and sold it for a seven thousand dollar profit. So we sold it to the buyer for for fourteen thousand. Actually if you have a look at the HUD you'll see it's seven thousand two hundred and ten dollars what we profited out of the out of the property. Now the seller was happy because he could get out of it. He cashed out his took seven thousand dollars and off he went. The buyer was happy, I was happy, everyone was happy. Win win win. And that's what you're looking for, right? Now yeah, let, let let me ask you this because you did first you did a two thousand dollar cash deal with none of your own money and then you did this seven thousand dollar deal now did you put seven thousand down or did you just agree to put seven thousand down i just agreed to put seven thousand down with a with also again with a with a um uh with a uh with an exit close and this one actually i had put down five hundred dollars um as you can see there's an honest money deposit which i put down five hundred dollars um, which was refundable if I had to exit out of the agreement. We see that we see that right here in the contract. So you put five hundred dollars yeah. down. These first two deals, how did you find them? Well, this one actually was brought to me um, by by one of the people I connected with in Cleveland. Um, the previous deal was also through my network. Um, heard about a property that was for sale in the West. Just needed to get out of it. Um, You'll see it, it's in university, it's in uh, Ohio Capital Partners' name. So they just needed to get out of it and get it going. They didn't, they didn't want, they were actually out of Florida and they didn't want the property anymore. And of course, it needed some, it needed some rehab because the tenants had just about destroyed it. So I just wanted to get out of it. So I just buy it by my network. So, yeah, and, and you created a network, and just to share so other people can envision sure. how they can do this too. Number one, um, all you got to do is start uh, networking with people who own that are in the business of owning rental properties. There's a percentage of them that don't want what they got or ready to get rid of it. And so, so you can find those by just reading signs. You can find those by looking at ads on the internet. You can look at our software and find, I mean, there's a lot of ways to yep. find these. So good. There is, there is a lot of ways. And I mean, there's, there's more ways to find people than you have time to make phone calls. <laughs> Honestly, I'm very because I mean I I spend a lot of time networking in the beginning, getting you know getting my feet under me, speaking to everyone, and you know I mean just you just got to tell them what you want to accomplish and be honest about it. You know don't um, I always say you know don't don't make as if you're this big investor because you're going to get anywhere. Um, 
you know, just, just be honest and tell them what you want to accomplish. And a lot of them, you'll be surprised at how helpful they are. Well, that's awesome. All right, so this one here, you make seven thousand some odd dollars in just uh, about three or four days. You told me, I think. And uh... right, so the assignment was signed on the twenty seventh of July, and the contract I think was signed on the. I don't remember now. It was so it shows me the sixteenth of August settlement date for on the uh, HUD one. Uh, so, yeah, correct. So it didn't take you too long, and you made yourself some nice money. Correct. Uh, all right. So you proved you could do that. Now you decide to get into uh, some actual uh, rental or rental properties of your own. <clears throat> First, I'll finish showing the pictures of this one here that you sold for the seven thousand. It's, you can see it's got good bones. I'm looking at the hardwood floor in the dining room here, uh, looking at the uh, nice fire, really nice fireplace. Now, wood floor could stand to be refinished a little bit, but I'm sure your right. rehabber's got that in mind. And uh, bedrooms are very livable. And in mm -hmm. the attic, there's some work being done. We see that. Uh, but right. uh, there you go. And that could actually be converted to a bedroom up there for kids right. and yep. such. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Correct. Yeah. All right. So we get into the next one, six eighty-five. Now we're yeah. kind of graduating into uh, properties that you own yourself, that are you're hoping to make some money on. On, and it looks like, you know, this one looks pretty stable as you look at the picture on the front. Tell us a little bit about. The, how you decide what kind of a rental you want or don't want? Well, um, we, for us, our strategy is it has to cash flow um, for the reason that we that we, we finance them. Um, and, you know, so it has to have a positive cash flow. So, the, the, you know, the, the value or the, the cost of the property, um, this one actually was $33,000. Um, you know, it's a it's a uh, it's built in 1995. It's in an older area, but it was built in 1995, so it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. So it looks just it presents nice right from the outside. So um, you know, if you ever have to go and if you ever do need to liquidate and you need to sell your property, it'll it'll stick out in that area like a sore thumb, right? As being um, a nice, attractive looking home that you correct. wouldn't mind living in. You're exactly right. You, you look at yeah. this and it's very clean. It's very, mm -hmm. very nice. Now, talk to us about your strategy as far as what you're looking at in terms of age and condition, if you will, on a property when you decide to buy it. So for this area, I mean, we, we, we looked around and had a look at see, you know, what, what, what the people want. And I mean, you, you speak to your realtors and um, people like people that uh, pay a higher rent want a newer property. So these are all built in 1995 or newer. All the properties that we purchased in this area were built in 1995 or newer. So they they newer homes, right? So you can get a little bit more rent out of them. Um, this house here specifically rents for eight hundred dollars a month. Um, you know the costs all involved, um, all said and done, cash flows about three hundred dollars a month into the pocket. Yeah. Um, you know, so and I mean that that you can take to pay off your principal on your on your on your um, financing or you know just stick in your pocket if you want. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about that because this is positive cash flow, three hundred dollars a month, which adds to the till, and because you got a nineteen ninety five or newer home that you're buying, you can look at the kitchen cabinets here. You can look at the kitchen. It's 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 there. It's solid. It's stable. It's not like you know, if you buy an older, older home, gosh knows you could run into issues with asbestos, with right. uh, uh, lead paint, with uh, mm -hmm. Chinese drywall, gosh knows what. But you've eliminated all of that, and you got something that's, right. that you're looking to be ma low maintenance and and high profit. Good for you. This okay. looks this looks awesome. All right, so yeah, I'm. Sure. You've mentioned this before, but this living room showing a picture of the living room now. And as you look at something mm -hmm. like this, what what when you first looked at this picture and you were deciding whether or not to buy it, did this say anything to you? Yeah, you know, and I mean, you, you, you always got to look at the tenant occupied. Always look. Always look at the tenant. What type of tenant is in there? 
So you have a look at the couches. You know, they're nice. They're, they're nice couches. There's a little carpet runaway comes in the door, so you obviously care for the carpet there. Um, you know, the, the curtains are nicely tied back. Everything looks neat. There's no, you know, um, left marks around the light switches. So it keeps it clean, right? So that and that, that's the type of tenant you're looking for. You're looking for someone that's neat and tidy and and you know that, that looks after your property. And those are those are good indicators to look for when you when you see pictures. Right, and, and we're looking here at the dining room, and again, it's you're seeing that neatness that you're talking about. They got the garbage can over there, so they got a place to throw stuff away, and they're not throwing it on the floor or anything like that. And um, it just has a you, you could tell sometimes when you look at something, it, it witnesses to you the ambience of it that that this is a good tenant, this is somebody that you could get into this and, and you're you're off and running, you got a good start going. So this was good thinking on yep. your part. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, that's kind of thing we look at look for, you know. Just um the need to see a tenant is a big thing because that goes along way in the rental property. Right. And I'm looking at the bedroom here and, and uh the uh uh you know it's look it's it's very neat. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I mean you see the curtains again are tied back now see there's not a like a Right, and then we're on to the next one here, six twenty-four. Tell us about this one. This also looks pretty solid to me, just looking at it. From it is, and again, it's, a, it's, it's the same area. Actually, um, if you have a look, I believe these two are in the same street. They're right; they get down the street from each other. Yes. Um, so. The East East One Hundred One, and again, it's a property that was built in nineteen ninety-five. Um, same same deal. Put six thousand dollars down, which I actually had made with my with my wholesaling. Uh, put six thousand dollars down, and Kingdom Cash Company had financed the rest, which was it was a thirty three thousand dollar property, and you know financed thirty seven thousand dollars of it, and I only make interest payments on it, um, which is two hundred and twenty five dollars a month. And for a two-year term, and then again, there's a balloon at the end of that, so you can either refinance that or pay off the $27,000 in the property jobs. That's pretty cool. So you've got a, uh, and what's neat about this is really win-win-win, because you're paying 10% interest on a $27,000 loan, and this right. is going right into um, the Luis de Velez SEP IRA account. And you know if you if you're trying to run an IRA account of your own, and trying to figure out well what do I do with this retirement money or whatever you're trying to to save here, you know you're going to be hard pressed to find a lot of opportunities to have an investment that is secured by undervalued real estate, at wherein you're making ten percent. And I think, you know, the thing, what you did here, and I want to talk a little bit about that because I think it's really important, there, so that other students realize that they can find people who have money. People have money and they have an yep. opportunity to invest in a solid property like this, secured yep. by undervalued real estate, and they're going to get 10% on their money. And why would that be a bad idea? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know... Um, uh, Louis just loves it, right? Because he's just making ten percent, and it's it's seventy five, eighty percent risk free for him, because he's got an undervalued under undervalued asset. So I mean, if if I happen to default, he can just take a property, sell it for thirty five, thirty forty thousand dollars, and make his money back easy, right? Absolutely. These, these properties, these properties sell for forty, forty two thousand dollars all day long. There you go. You know, and and with the propensity. As Cleveland, you know, and it's, I, I joke, it's the LeBron factor, but I, I, well, he's winning. He's, but the city has an upbeat attitude about itself, if you know what I'm right. saying. Things are going well for them. And, uh, you know, there you go. So it's, it's yeah, awesome. Sure. All right. So this is your HUD-1 settlement. Shows just what you're talking about, 27381 to, fi to finance. And uh, here's the kitchen. Um uh, it's got a gas stove, which I, I wouldn't have anything else in my house. And uh, I had them bring in a gas line <laughs> so that I could have a gas stove. But, you know, if you're serious about cooking and it means something to you, that's what you should have. And you got one there and you've got yep. decent looking cabinets. Everything looks like it's solid. 
you know, again, I'm looking into the living room with the front door there, and we're seeing the same kind of thing. We're seeing right. uh, the level of care and neatness, the people that are living right. there. And uh, the hallway upstairs, uh, you've, I can look into a couple different bedrooms there, and right. there's nothing out of place here uh, at all. It looks really... Yeah, you look around the light switches and uh, on the corner post here where the remote is laying when you look down the hallway there, right? Usually that you can see where the, where the hand marks are coming around the corner there. You know, a lot of people don't clean it because they don't care, right? And that's something I really focus on is, you know, is, is places like that. I'll look at that. And I mean, the bit that's not made doesn't really, I don't really care. Um, right. You know, but looking at looking at the neatness of, you know, there's, there's, there's no black marks around the light switches here. and You know, there's no kick marks against the bottom of the wall and even even if you scroll down to the bedroom you know it's it's neat enough there's not clutter on top of yeah and i mean they're living in it so you've got to expect that you know if it's me i'm uh, gonna try to put that clicker uh thing where i can find it and right there is good and then and and they got a tv in the bedroom there's nothing wrong with what these people are doing here on top of their game plan so that's really cool that's, that's way cool. Well, we're back to a uh, picture of you and your lovely wife, Kevin. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anything about what what you've done so far and what you're planning to do in the future that you would like to share with other people now that, that might help them to uh, feel good about what they're doing and make moves forward? Or... Right. And I mean, you know what? Do the work. Don't, don't be scared to do the work. But, um uh, it's um, you know to get going. It seems as if you're just chugging away and not getting anywhere you are. And every time you pick up that thing, you're getting somewhere. You're making that connection. You're making that you know that connection with that person. Um, they you know like if you tell them that you even still today from from the word get go when I was speaking to realtors or different people that have my phone number. Oh yeah, you spoke to me about nine months back. I don't even remember who the person is. You mentioned this. I used to look. You know, you still want you know, they are. You know, I'll never say no to a deal, but you know, just pick up the phone and call. Don't be, don't be scared to speak to people. You know, and I mean, we're we're in the we're in the real estate game. We're in the, we're in the people's business. I like to say because that's that's what makes that's what makes a break makes a break your your, your real estate is people. Right, and and just for the benefit of the people that are listening to this, I don't think any of you are you know picking putting yourself in a harder situation than kevin had ends up in canada working on a farm with uh, probably an empty wallet i would think and and was yeah, pretty close to one anyway yeah and is able to you know take care of his family feed his family and and uh, make sense out of life and uh yeah. decided to get into real estate investing to build a more compelling future and that's exactly what he's doing and that's exactly what you could do as well so with that idea in mind, I'm going to uh, end this unless you got any final comment. No, just do the work. <laughs> That's Th all I'm saying. Thank you so much.